this is our Q&A for hematology. For more videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook. Okay, so these are our questions for the topic of anemia. Number one, red cell morphology of patients with iron deficiency anemia. Letter A, normocytic normochromic. Letter B, microcytic hypochromic. Letter C, macrocytic normochromic. Or letter D, microcytic normochromic. The answer here is letter B, microcytic hypochromic. When we talk about the red cell morphology, we are referring to its size and also the color as um, shown to us by the hemoglobin concentration. And the size and hemoglobin concentration will depend on the RBCs, MCV, and MCHC. These are both part of the RBC indices, and they are used to classify our anemias morphologically. And by using them, we can have three classifications. So let us go to our screen and enumerate the three classifications. The first is our microcytic hypochromic. We also have the macrocytic, usually they are normochromic. And the last one, we have the normocytic, normochromic anemia. Okay, I usually draw a line here so that I will remember that the first two classifications um, are produced because there is a substance that decreases. Okay, the, the reason for their um, the reason for the development of these anemias is because they have decreased substances. So substance that is decreased in the microcytic hypochromic anemia will be the hemoglobin. Well, for the macrocytic anemias, although this will be um, divided further into a non-megaloblastic anemia and the megaloblastic anemia, I usually say to myself that the macrocytic anemias, especially the megaloblastic type of macrocytic anemias, will be because of a decrease in the DNA precursors so that there will be uh, problems in DNA synthesis. These DNA precursors that we're talking about will be our vitamin B12, vitamin B12, and folic acid. And then finally, we have the normocytic normochromic anemia. And I drew a line here so that I'll know that there is no substance that is missing or lacking in our normocytic normochromic anemia. But the problem is either in the bone marrow or in the circulation. Either the bone marrow does not produce enough cells or it does produce enough cells, but there is something happening in the circulation that leads to the destruction of the cells in the peripheral blood. Okay, so these are the um, classification by morphology of our anemias. And in our question, the given type of anemia is um, iron deficiency anemia, and that is a uh, cause of a microcytic hypochromic anemia. Okay, so let's go back to our slide here and let us remember that. Uh, the microcytic hypochromic anemias may be remembered by using the mnemonic ATIS, which stands for anemia of chronic disease, thalassemia, iron deficiency anemia, and sideroblastic anemia. Okay, next question. Which anemia has red cell morphology similar to that seen in iron deficiency anemia? A, sickle cell anemia, B, thalassemia, C, pernicious anemia, or D, hereditary spherocytosis? Answer here is B, thalassemia. And as we have noted a while ago, you can easily remember those with microcytic hypochromic morphology by the mnemonic at this letter T stands there for thalassemia and letter I stands there for iron deficiency anemia. So let us just again go to our... A black screen here so that I can share to you how I remember those four conditions that lead to hypochromic microcytic anemias. As we have noted a while ago, the reason for their development is because of a decreased hemoglobin concentration. Hemoglobin, when we look at this molecule, is co uh, composed of the heme molecule combined with the globin molecule. 
Okay, and for us to produce heme, we will need to combine iron with protoporphyrin. Protoporphyrin. All right, so if any of the following substances has a problem, that will lead to a problem in hemoglobin concentration, then leading to our microcytic hypochromic anemia. So let's have uh, a quick review of what these are. So if ever the iron is the problem, it might be because the iron is deficient. And if it is deficient, you are lacking iron, you are going to develop the iron deficiency anemia. Okay. If iron is present but you cannot use it properly, that means you have a defective utilization, then you will give rise to a condition known as anemia of chronic disease, now known as anemia of chronic inflammation. If the problem is in the protoporphyrin molecule, then we will be having the sideroblastic anemia. And then finally, if him is okay but globin is not, globin chains are uh, missing or deficient or decreased in concentration, then we are referring to the thalassemias. Okay? So in a nutshell, that will be the reason for the development of these conditions of uh, microcytic hypochromic anemias. All right? So here, one more time, the answer is thalassemia. They have the same microcytic hypochromic morphology in uh, iron deficiency anemia. Number three, characteristic morphologic feature in folic acid deficiency is, now folic acid, we have mentioned this a while ago, is one of the DNA precursors, right? And if ever DNA precursors are missing or are deficient, we have already said that that will give rise to our megaloblastic anemia. All right, so megaloblastic anemia is a type of a macrocytic anemia. And so the characteristic morphologic feature here is letter C, macrocytosis. The cells are large. Now the cells are macrocytic. All right. Number four, thalassemias are characterized by letter A, absence of iron in hemoglobin. Letter B, decreased rate of globin synthesis. Letter C, structural abnormalities in the hemoglobin molecule. Or letter D, decreased rate of heme synthesis. Answer here is letter B, decreased rate of globin synthesis. As we have noted a while ago, let's just have a quick review. Hemoglobin molecule will be composed of heme combined with globin. All right, and heme is produced whenever you combine iron with protoporphyrin, all right? And then one more time, when the problem is in the iron, it can give rise either to iron deficiency anemia or anemia of chronic disease. If the problem is in the protoporphyrin, we have sideroblastic anemia. And if the problem is in the globin portion of hemoglobin, we have the thalassemias, okay? If you lock alpha chains, then you have the alpha thalassemia. If it is the beta chain that is affected, then you have the beta thalassemias. All right, so number four is letter B, decreased rate of globin synthesis. Number five, the final number for this video, which of the following characteristics are common to hereditary spherocytosis, hereditary elliptocytosis, hereditary stomatocytosis, and paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria? Letter A, red cell membrane defects. Letter B, measured platelet count. Letter C, autosom autosomal dominant inheritance. And letter D, positive direct anti-globulin test. Answer here will be letter A, red cell membrane defects. They are all red cell membrane defects. All right? Let's go to the black screen. And so uh, we're going to show you um, one other way to classify our anemias is by the cause. A while ago, we talked about by the morphology. So if we are going to classify the anemias according to cause, we may um, classify them by number one, if the cause is because of decreased production, if they are not produced enough. Right, or number two, you have increased destruction. Under the increased destruction, 
you will have other levels. The increased destruction usually refers to our hemolytic anemias. And our hemolytic anemias may be then classified according to the cause. Okay, is it intrinsic to the red cells or is it extrinsic defect? Intrinsic or extrinsic defect. All right, these are the types of hemolytic anemias that we have. Under the intrinsic um, causes of hemolytic anemias, we have the conditions which are hereditary, hereditary, and acquired. All right. And under these hereditary conditions, we have a lot of causes. It may be because of membrane defects. There is something missing in the membrane. It can be because of enzyme defects. It can be because of hemoglobinopathies. Or it can be because of thalassemia or decreased globin synthesis. Okay? Thalassemia. All right? And then under the acquired, only one condition is mentioned here. And it's easy to remember. It will be your paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, which is a membrane defect. All right? So under the hereditary causes of intrinsic hemolytic anemias, you have here membrane defects, and the examples of that will be the hereditary spherocytosis, elliptocytosis, and other um, conditions we have mentioned in this question. So the answer for this number is red cell membrane defect. Okay, so to complete our list here, under the extrinsic causes of hemolytic anemias, we can classify them according to um, non-immune or immune causes non-immune or immune causes, all right? Discussion, uh, full discussion of this certain topic is um, not going to be covered by this video. So, yeah, let's go back to our question. Number five is red cell membrane defects, okay? That's it for this topic. I'll see you again on our next lecture. I hope you, you are doing well, and I hope you do good in your future, uh, future exams. Always remember that God loves you so much, and so uh, be happy always, okay? Bye, guys. Bye-bye. God bless.